a half hour before we did. It's an exciting 20 minutes for you guys, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, sir, you, you suggested it several times, actually. That might have been confused, because I don't know why we thought that the listening post was for the five, because Keith had talked about scheduling that meeting for about o'clock. I'll have to focus on this one. Next time no. we got it. Can I just make a random comment when we didn't wake up to that conversation that was just happening? Uh, can you please wait until our public comment section? <laughs> sure. Because that's, that's when right. it actually would be appropriate. I, I, okay. um, I am going to call this meeting to order. Um, and before we get into our, our meeting, um, I just want to say, like, we run these meetings very open. We engage in the public a lot. And it's actually impacting our ability to get our board meetings complete in a timely fashion. Um, I am going to just kind of, I think, try to run this meeting a little bit more the way it's supposed to, meaning in between, you know, this, we have public comment sessions in our, our agenda, and the agenda items in between, I'm going to try, I will probably fail, but I'm going to try to engage with the audience less and try to keep more of the board conversation moving. Um, because our meetings have been running two, two and a half hours, and it's difficult to to make some, to have sound discussions and to make sound decisions when we're doing that. So um, I'm going to try this. And the other thing that does mean, because we have listening posts, really I've been running these meetings almost as listening posts. We're, we're really welcoming all comments, and um, we've got a lot of business to get done in the next two, three months. And I'm going to try to engage a little bit less with the audience um, if any of you don't like that i'm always welcome to outside these meetings to give any opinions anybody has um so if, if, if it doesn't work for you tonight and it's, it's aggravating you please talk to me about it and, and maybe we can go from there because um, we did have some good suggestions on it um, about how we should even set up these rooms and all that at, at, at first i thought it was a great idea and then i thought well you know it's actually kind of impairing the way we get business done sometimes we have public section comment sessions and so I'm going to try to limit what you might have to say um, to that and so if there's an agenda item that's on here that you came to talk about during the public comment sessions might be when you might want to make your comment towards that um, tonight I'm going to try to limit public comments a little bit because we do need to get a lot of business done um, but uh, we'll see how it goes anyway so if I'm cutting people off or, or not talking to them you might ordinarily be used to that's why um, so first up for our agenda is to approve the minutes from September 18th. <coughs> so motion. So move. I guess second. I got one already. Then you jump in. On the minutes. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Good. Um, on I guess section 5A. I'm not really sure where it should go, but just before we voted, I had clarified you know, that I was going to vote against the preschool and why. And I was kind of hoping that was going to be yeah, it. Sure. Yeah. Can we enter into the yeah. minutes? The yeah. why? The key said he was for a public preschool that was going to vote against it, as he's against it being at the church. Correct. So it wasn't. He's voting against it because of the possibility of it being at the church. So let's enter that into the minutes. Yeah. Uh, does okay with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other changes? Just, to, just want to point something out, and maybe some. Maybe someone else can clarify this in 5B, uh, the pavilion update, the second sentence, they need some money. I don't think that was what was said. No, because the budget has to the money. The they need to they, fundraise the but, money. But there's they, nothing said. that where it has to do with us. They're, whatever money they're expecting to spend. No, it's not public to, money, it's fundraising. They, they need businesses. money, but not coming from us. Right, right. okay. I, I just think the whole, I think the whole they need money. They need some money and construct. Because that's really not what it was. No, obviously, we just put that in like every paragraph. Nobody wants to anybody. So we could strike it because I don't think it's going to be buried. The, the building permit needs to be approved. I, I did sign the building permit. I don't know if it's been approved yet or not. But I'm oh, sorry, that's out for this discussion. I already did. Yeah, I'm not going to ask. Any other changes? No, um, I just, it doesn't say when, um, let's see, on um, section 9B, number 3, B3, robotics, no, about that. Joan and Kristen are presenting at the Kristen McAuliffe Museum. When are they presenting? The it's not at the museum, museum. At, the, oh. at the technology conference. It says museum. So that needs to be changed. Okay. I'm reading, I, I, I can see that. 
likely I can get it wrong, but that's pretty far And that's, off. what, November 17th, John? Okay. On uh, November 30th, December 1st, one, one of those two days, we go to the conference on one of the days and present on the other. Thank you. Just wanted to know when I should ask how it went. We'll let you know. Um, any other news? All those in favor? And before we delve into citizen comments, let me clarify again. This, if you're here for the preschool, we are talking about the preschool on the agenda. So that's actually when it would be appropriate to, to ask questions or have comments towards that. But I am going to try to limit those comments tonight because we do need to have the meeting rules. So if you don't have to make comments towards the preschool <coughs> during the citizen comments, so that's what you want to do. But Angus, as an example, um, when we're running out of time in our previous meeting for what you're talking about, it would be perfectly appropriate during our meeting under citizen comments to you address those comments towards us as the Jackson Board as a concern about what's happening in Bartlett. Um, it would be perfectly fine for you to do that. Um, um, but as I say, that's the kind of comment where if it's not on the agenda, then that's where you would make a citizen comment towards something like that. So I will open the floor to citizen comments. Hi there. Um, I'm Susan Osparin, and I'm presenting a letter from the Jackson Grammar School staff in support of Mrs. Dombowski's um, sixth grade proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Usually I would say take one and hand it down, but you know, you're already you anyway. <laughs> You're on camera, too. met with a lot of difficulty at the Bartlett level and had a the child ended up taking the classes not knowing whether or not they would be acceptable to the school and it was really difficult and of course I have kids who have um, been in sports for many years and it's surprising that you know for an after-school activity they let them leave an hour and a half early but you know if they are participating in a gymnastics that's not a school sponsored event or skiing why should those kids be punished any different? That's all. Thank you, Karen. I think it was very vague, that conversation of Joe's response about hypothetical futures. We're talking about letting kids out of school an hour and a half early. And there's all this contortion about calling that sports time now part of school. That just is un almost unheard of. And we are pending, spending a lot of money sending kids down there for a full day of school. And that's not a full day of school. I think that what is the standard by which they're doing that? I think, you know, that time in school, does that meet up to the standard of time in school? I don't know. Does I want whatever sports are left over at Bartlett, the standard to be at least as good as what the kids are driving down for. And the resources and the fields and everything else. If you're going to add a sixth grade to Bartlett, you have a elementary school ball field. You, I mean, talking about raising the game a little bit for what's left. The sports that's left there at Kent Bartlett is a co-ed soccer. That's not a standard for middle school to have co-ed soccer. That's, you know, it's very hard for 7th grade girls to play with 8th grade boys. So should they drop it? I don't know, but I'm saying yeah, raise. Well, they said like they whatever it was soccer, and they, we, they, we had no soccer, our only chance for our kids to play soccer was well, to go to Kent. I think, it's a, I think it's a crazy message to send the kids. That, you know, if I'm a sixth grade boy and I'm going down there, I get to school an hour and a half early. And I, play I think it's a better I'm message than, than a kid not being able to play something that they're passionate about. Well, so I that, understand, right. What yeah. I don't understand is to your point, Angus, when my children went in and we got chastised by the science teacher for leaving school early for Nordic. And that wasn't every day. That was once or twice a week to go to a meet, maybe once a week if they had to get out early and we were told that that's not really kosher. 
it's not not acceptable because they're missing science, their science partners are missing them, it's affecting their academics. And that was a choice that we made, but that was only one day a week, and now they're missing school an hour and a half every day of the week. So I have some. Yeah, I mean, there's. A I mean, we weren't there for the three years of back and forth discussion on why you guys came to that decision. I get that, but and that opens up the whole. I, I mean, fully support it. it. You know, I mean, that's you know, we, we were asking for a bus twice a week to Bear Notch, and we got denied for the cross country team. That's one state championships from Bartlett. And, and sure. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> um, who, who sent her that, by the way? Joe Bus. Yeah. Okay. All right, right one. I don't think um, <laughs> one sport or another. I think the issue. No, I'm just saying. Just saying they're they're high high school, school, they're they're leaving high school. They leave school early to go to meets in high school. Meets. They're, they're, meets. They're leaving school about to go out to play with a middle school team that has meets and has games. They're leaving really early is because they have a game some other place. Otherwise, they're getting the regular bus to go down there. If they don't want to play the sport, don't play the sport. You stay there and play in the U.S. That's not the We can talk about this. I see it out there forever. Well, hold on. I've got to clarify one thing. That's not the case. They're leaving for practices every day. Yeah, 45. But whether there's a game or not. So don't sign up. There's something important. There you go. Don't sign up. Folks, I'd just like to say this. This is what I was talking about before, too, and I think this is something that we all need to become very aware of because it's happening right now. And it has to do with the state standards and what they look like. And this is the change that's happening, okay? And it's there. Th this is already the law. It's no longer that you have to be in school 180 days. It's going to be hours now. For instance, the hours that we attend school in the Jackson Grammar School give us way more hours than we need. We might be able to change things like no, not have to have snow days anymore, or not have to have blizzard bags. Um, there's going to be credits for things that happen outside of the school building environment, and that's something that it, that, that's happening now. And like I said, the standards for phys ed. They went from being, you needed this many hours per week to some healthy activity every day. Um, and how this change impacts all of us is going to be big. How it impacts our kids is going to be big. We need to have the conversation. Otherwise, these things are gonna just kind of happen and we won't understand them or know why they're happening. Um, and so I mean, it's just we need to be aware of. Um, and I think that, from my own standpoint, I think that how that impacts a small school is big. When you take a large portion of that school and send them somewhere else for part of the school day, that impacts the entire community. Maybe for the positive, maybe for the worst, maybe there's some give and take there. But if we don't become aware of it and realize how it's happening, we might become so deluded and trying to do too much in a small community that we can actually do. Because we probably can't do everything, even though we want to give our kids everything and every opportunity. What makes sense for the community might be something different. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. But that's going to impact us in a big way and we all need to be aware that it's happening. Um, and so as a school board, where that forum takes place, where that conversation takes place, I don't know, but we should probably set it up at some point. I just think it's so, it's so devaluing of the UA program. Let's say every kid played football on field hockey and every single one left the building at 145 to play sports. Perfect, it'd be so much easier to coordinate things. Be easier. At one forty-five, it's an hour and a half before the end of school. You go to school to go to school. Sports is after school. I mean, I mean it, meaning it's extracurricular. This is you're supposed to be in school for a curriculum. And I guess, I guess what I'm saying is that what the state's doing, and what some of the standards are becoming, is that almost everything's going to be extracurricular. It's going to be individualized to a point that things might get all diluted, and it's. It's just something we need to be aware of to see it happening because it's like the school day isn't going to be the school day anymore. So, Jay, what you're referring to is this when is that supposed to happen? It's happening now. I mean, the transition is, is happening now. For instance, like we, we can, it's, it's, you know, just introduced me to the terminology last week or two weeks ago. It's called the balanced calendar. And it's, you're no longer required to go to school for 180 days. You can petition the state to go to school for certain hours. And something that, you know, recommendations I've heard from teachers in the community is that, you know, we might not need to have blizzard bags because Jackson goes to school for, I don't know how many hours a day it is, but they qualify, it, it might eat up all our snow days. I think it's 14 extra days. It doesn't matter, there's roughly 14 extra days. Eight. Eight. Eight, eight. Oh, eight, eight extra days that, that we have. So we might not have to worry about <coughs> snow days anymore as long as we petition the state properly. And my take on the state is that anything you say, they're pretty much going to approve. 
because the state really doesn't want the responsibility anymore. It really comes down to local school districts. So these decisions we're going to be able to make as communities. And if we don't make them together, with having the good, honest conversations to have what happens in reality, then you're going to have people, and some will love it, some will hate it, and we'll have tensions in the community that we don't really want and won't be healthy for us. So I think that it's, you know, we need to be aware of it. We need to figure out how are we going to set up these conversations so that we have honest discussion and a community yeah. decision. I think you have to have standards. You also have to say that if you're going to send kids someplace, that the program you're offering at Barlett is at least at a, the, that level. That there has to be, you know, what you, whether it's, UA or whatever, they're, whether it's class size, you have to have something that is quality. And, and if you can't maintain that standard, then you should be shipping kids out. And it's not about the individual sports, but if, you, if you're going to offer a soccer program, it should be at a standard. I'm not saying if the football, send them all down there. It's, it's great if the st that's the standard. But don't have a program back at Bartlett that's half the standard of what the kids are leaving for. I, I think that's you know, make sure all wh whatever kids are left behind because they want to do music, they want to do this, but it, it still meets some, you're paying attention to what it is. It's not just random. Well, there's four kids left in the building. Okay, we'll make do. No. So, Angus, I think That's we all, I think, and I won't speak for you all, but mm -hmm. just knowing you all and how you communicated, I think we all agree on that. And our understanding has been that, that we are providing that for the kids when we send them to Bartlett. We've entrusted Bartlett to manage that for us. And should we know more about what's happening over there? I think well, that's clear. We should have more conversations, yes. But we're dealing with a bigger, different issue in that the school day and the school year as we grew up with, when you go to school for a certain amount of time, and that is the learning time, is, is going to cease to exist in a lot of places. And we have to figure out how we're going to respond to that. And it's easy to say, don't cut UA for football because UA is part of a curriculum. And so that might be a simple conversation. But what if we cut UA because we had an advanced sixth grader who couldn't get the math that she needed here? So we <coughs> worked it out so that she went to Bartlett or she took a class at Johns Hopkins or somewhere else. That's what we're grappling with, is how are we going to frame that learning time and organize it? so that when a kid participates in an extended learning opportunity, maybe they're a gifted soccer player and they're going down state as a pre-Olympic soccer player. Should we consider that as part of their education as a person because they're dedicating a lot of their time and resources to that? Can we partner with parents better to do that and with the SAU? That's what we're really grappling with here. So I think well, I'm in agreement with you. I think and you're making some good points about how we need to improve. Uh, but I think one of the things we need to do is work with parents and with anyone who cares to have these conversations and I know you know I went to a meeting at the PTO meeting like, was it last month I, was the, I think I was the only non pt person there to talk about competency-based education and Gail was like well you've already heard this four or five times and it seems to be something you know do you want to hear it again you know so part of it is that it is everybody's very busy and you're trusting your kids to us so we need to know if there's a better way we can communicate with you about these changes because they're big and while it might be a struggle to kind of sort it out with Bartlett and Kennett, it's also a major opportunity because Joe Losey said see shrinking numbers, and I can tell you as someone who's from New York, I see shrinking numbers and I think what a gift, what an opportunity. We can still afford to do these things and maybe we can do more. Is it sending the kids down to Conway for football? I don't know, but I think it's something that we need to keep talking about. I think we need to, to, and it's a balance. We need to make sure the balance and constantly looking forward and seeing what's ahead. But we can't lose sight of the now. What's going to look forward today? We've, um, in the past, my family was discouraged or not quite recommended for pulling a child out for sports. Right. So you tell me I'm allowed to take her out every day this year, this child. Uh, for a scheme and not be recommended by the Bartlett School District? We don't know that yet. We're not in that season. Well, they're doing that for football. Well, we're not in that season. Because I was chastised last yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah. We're chastised. It, but, but Karen, it, well, it was for the Bartlett what the school is trying to accomplish is that they're trying to do it with an eye on the standards, with an eye on balancing the school day to the best ability that they can. And Bartlett said, you know, they went into the block schedule this year, they said it was new. And they said that there would probably have some kinks that would have to be ironed out, and there's going to be. Um, obviously, the school can't meet every request made by parents for every single gift. 
there's got to be a balance there. And how to find that balance is going to take just spoke very well towards us. It's going to be a struggle sometimes. Um, but the important thing is that we continue to talk about it and continue to try to figure out the best solution. And as Anne said, with an eye on the right now. And sometimes the right now, we might not like the answers we get. But again, I think that everyone's trying to move this ahead progressively as best they can. And if there are issues you're dealing with that you're facing, we need to know about them because otherwise, unless we run into a playground and we have to address it ourselves, that's something that has been limiting to me personally because I know a lot about what's happening with the grammar school. But I don't run into, I mean, I don't even see Jerry anymore. I used to like every, I'd be like, hey, Jerry, what's going on? He's like trying to scoot away from me. <laughs> you know, but now uh, I can't even do that because he's got, you know, so. <laughs> so as I understand it, though, whether you are sick from school, whether you're missing out for sports or whatever it is, it's the student's responsibility to be in touch with whatever they miss and make it up. It might make it a little tricky if you are in um, science and your lab partner is not there to work with on a regular basis. That's that's trickier, but a lot of the work, you need to be in touch with your teacher and be responsible and, um, and get the work done, no matter what, whether you're sick with the flu or whether you're sick, I mean, out on a sports thing. Right, but we've heard conflicting information from the A, you know, the school has to keep track of attendance for economic reasons, and then also it does a small environment like this one in Jackson. If you're missing half a class, it's really hard to progress on the curriculum if you're missing half the class, even though you're supposed to get the backup information and report that. But if you're missing, you have six kids and three of them are out, how are you going to do a lab? And how are you going to? That's what I have been told as a parent. Do you really need to go away then, or do you need to do that? Because we're doing this in school and we need the full class. So as we're in a small community, you have to balance these things. And, and to your point, I get your point, but the flip side is from the education side. There's no one to teach. How can you, what do you, what do you, you know, I mean, so anyway, Jerry, go ahead. Does anybody have anything <laughs> else important they want to add for now? I think this is going to be a conversation that we're going to continue to have. And we're to, I, at some point, it's not going to be this meeting, we're going to have to figure out as a board where we have this conversation, where do we, how do we have this form? Because it's, I think it's, the change is happening, Sandra, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what was happening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm pretty in okay. touch with the school community, and I didn't know what was happening. I can tell you, the staff in the high school doesn't know what's really happening. I mean, some do, some don't. Um, it's, it's new to everybody. Um, and where are those conversations taking place? I don't know, but <laughs> the background where where and why it happened was because there was a, a town league, town football league. Uh, no, no, I'm not talking about football. Talking I'm talking about the, the idea of the balanced the calendar concept. and the whole concept of what's happened, what the changes that's happening as far as the school day mm -hmm. is concerned. How it's not going to be the traditional school day that we all grew up in. It's changing, um, and it's changing quickly. And it started probably two or three years ago, seriously, in New Hampshire. And the impetus for it was really, I mean, the, the idea that the kids are being tested too much and how we get away from that. And, and the standards assessments and all of that is, it's, it's, but it's all sort of steamroll now into something that we might not be prepared or know about yet. And we need to talk about it. So we'll continue but, to talk but about keep it. keep coming to the school board meetings. This is great to have this kind of dialect here and education and tell your friends, because this is the only way we're going to be able to communicate. I mean, there'll be letters and stuff, but being present at these meetings and exchanging information and listening posts and surveys. And there is a listening out. post next month. There's a listening post next month about middle school and high school. But, you know, so bring your friends. It's important to show up and educate yourself because we're all going to be learning together and making the big decisions as a community. And as a state, New Hampshire's trying. They think they're doing the right thing. That's really why it's happening. Because the state's really trying to walk away from the responsibility and but provide a, fr a framework for what they think a good education is but not dictate to each individual school district what they have to do. And so that's the standards are there of what the expectations would be for success, but how you get there is changing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to move along our agenda. Mm -hmm. And I can't see anything anymore. Presentation. <laughs> Preschool. <laughs> <laughs> I got some readers in my bag. You want? No. No. Presentation of school programs. Oh, sorry. Presentation of school FYI. 
programs and FYI I was finished. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is preschool? Oh, this is cool. Yes. Did you have any school items? School program? No. Okay. No? Okay. So okay. This is, well, we we knocked down number four. Those two things are all about school programs. So. Are, we, are we in the whole business? I'm yeah. sorry. We're in preschool. Okay, now we are. Uh, no, sorry. I'm doing so well with this. You are. <laughs> <laughs> 45 minutes. Okay. Um, preschool dress Here we go. Okay. So, for those of you who weren't here last time, um, I did a presentation where the school um, and the board had requested that I look at the school facility as an option for preschool as well as the church facility. We were awaiting, the, or the church had just made the determination of. Um, that yes, they would have a, a preschool located there, and I reworked the budgets and presented both budgets um, at that time. And I, in the interest of time, I was going to kind of review the entire presentation, but I think if the board's okay with it, I'll just kind of jump into. Um, and at the end of that meeting, I had hoped to bring a number of different options back to my faculty here and, and have a conversation about the pros and the cons of both the church site and then what the option of having a preschool here on this property would look like at the request of the board. So in front of you, um, you have the community church. Um, I see the pros is that it is a community building. It allows us to interface with the community. There's a full kitchen there that we have access to. The space is there. It's larger. Um, it wouldn't impact any programs here and there would be opportunities for us to collaborate you know, with at, the uh, community. Just for a moment, sure. for clarification. Um, I, I know we've heard communication from the church. Are, are we prepared at this point to, is the church a definite option for us at this point? Yes. Just to clarify. Yes. Yes. yes, that was all out, laid out in my budget in the last presentation. Do you want me to pull it up again? And no, 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 no. So at the last meeting, they had voted yet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know yes. we've I know we've heard in the I'm background sorry. that it's available. Yes, no, it is yes. it is available. We've we we all heard approved. underground that it's available. We haven't heard above yes, ground. Yes, I'm sorry. I thought that, that I had presented. <laughs> it is it is available. It's nine thousand dollars a month for the rent. Um, we would split the plowing. A year. A year. Yes. And one year renewal lease. With a one year renewal lease. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is the lease drawn up yet, or is it still? Yes. It is not drawn. No, it is not drawn up yet. No. I'm, I'm sorry. I just wanted to clarify that because I know we do in the background, but it hadn't been public yet, as far as I knew. Right. If you look on the back page that you've got here, the, the budget sheet that I just handed you, those would be the salaries and expenses for the church proposal in the middle column. Ninety-seven thousand dollars for salaries, nine thousand dollars for plowing. I mean, nine thousand dollars for rent, sixteen fifty for plowing. Supplies were twenty-five hundred. Curriculum was three thousand. Those were the same as as had been in the original uh, presentation that Jessica had done. Um, the insurance is still to be determined because they would need to see the lease before they would give us a price and might make some recommendations as to what should or should not be included in the lease related to our liability uh, insurance. And then the startup costs for there involved us just buying um, furnish furnishings and doing some minor repairs outside to the playground space mm. and adding some toys and, and activities. That plowing is half the plowing? Yes, that's what I was given as a full 3000 over $3,000 for the plow. Oh, well, I think they plow all the way around the back, right? And then they plow that's up the big. other side? No, 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 it's not that big. Did they plow the Wentworth? <laughs> Uh, they do. It. They do plow the road yeah, through the Wentworth and around. They yeah. they plow the entire the circle entire. There. Yeah. and, and it's not fun to plow. Right. So the only difference in staff salaries is that custodian. It's not only custodian, but if the, the preschool was to be located in this building, we wouldn't need that second aid on the property because we would always have another person available in the building for safety. The reason we needed an additional aid there was to ensure that there were always two adults for safety purposes with the children as a church. So that requirement, would that apply if this, I'm just, it's a hypothetical. Mm -hmm. If the preschool was at the Whitney Center, would you need a second aid? Would a second person who would be an aid physically mm -hmm. in the building? Yes. Okay. Yes, but um, because we've decided not to place the classroom at the Whitney Center, looking at all of the options, we looked at three different options. One was changing the configurations of all of our classrooms and, and our teaching staff to accommodate adding an additional preschool. 
the second option was to just change where we housed the students you know we have them in an upper house and a lower house we thought maybe we could use two big rooms and then have smaller breakout spaces designating one room for a preschool and then the third option was to relocate the library and there were three different <coughs> options for relocating the library one is to the Whitney Center one is to the basement and one is to explore the little red building across the street that was one day a week so um, I have not fleshed out those three options for the library yet um, but we'll do so by the next meeting however the staff did feel and I feel like relocating the library presents the least disruption to the current classroom configurations and programming in the building so the idea would be that the preschoolers would be in the library yes mm -hmm. okay but or the an additional classroom I don't think you've committed to that's where they would be you just try to free up a classroom right right either you know sixth grade second grade whatever grade it would right. just allow us the extra space for uh, but you maintain a lower house an upper house and the pre-k would be separate yes what I'm asking yeah. physically yes. okay yes and so and one of the reasons if you look at the pros and cons for Jackson <coughs> The staff are on the site it's easy for families to drop off and pick up their kiddos if they have older siblings and preschoolers here uh, we don't have to set up and break down the classroom if there's a funeral or a wedding or something like that at the church we would have to cancel school or stop <coughs> rearrange for that um, and I was paying extra custodial costs to allow for the breaking down we would have to break down every Friday and reset up every Monday at a minimum and then if there were additional um, events at the church or funerals or weddings we might have to also pick up again it makes it easy to transition into kindergarten and it also enables us to have um, youngsters who have some readiness issues as they're moving into kindergarten would have more flexibility within the building um, to have their needs met at work and vice versa if there were kiddos ready to move on they could do that as well with a little more flexibility in that with multi-age security and communications which I know is a concern that Keith and Jerry raised about having access to um, the walkie-talkies and fire drills and personnel and EMT on site and all of those kinds of things so that it's more secure uh, and it also allows us to reduce the half time aid it does however impact our current programming and it creates some space issues and different space needs we'll have to rethink the way we use our, our facility um, in order to do that we are going to have to invest in some new playground equipment here and change our fencing because we can all agree that preschool is going to need a fence that can close keep them away from the water the road all of those good things um, so we'll be needing to do some fencing and depending on where we move the library to we might need some building um, John is talking to Jay Henry and we're looking at um, a couple <coughs> of different options for what kind of um, things that we'll need facility wise uh, one thing to comment as far as facility wise is concerned is that when we make expenditures on things like fencing or even if it's a new building someday um, to accommodate these types of things that's a long-term commitment that the community is making towards its own assets towards its own values so yeah you might build a fence for a playground one year then you have it you have it for 10 years or 15 years mm -hmm. you know, it's not something that you're renting year to year so it's something that you're buying attribute to as an asset to the, to the school district or the town <coughs> um, I think that, you know, it might be in the, the con um, column for one year but if you're contributing to the overall asset of the school district then to me that's not really a con that's, that's a problem it's saying that you know like, we're committed to school in this community this is how we're going to do it um, that doesn't negate the space need, which is really more of the issue, because we don't even have a space to build the fence, no matter whether you're investing in it or not. So it is, you know, that's why it's a con, because it's a space issue, not necessarily because it's, a, it's an investment into the fence. The investment in the fence is a good thing. So basically, the recommendation is that we can um, accommodate a preschool on the property. We have some budget figures that we still need to work out, but that would be the best option for us moving forward. So, okay, yeah, I think you just answered what was going to be my question. What's you your you and the staff feel that is the best option? Yes. Of the two? 
Right, the church. Yeah, right. Right. Well, right. Unless you've got a surprise course. option that we don't yes. know about in right. pocket key. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I just was clarifying Gail that she might have another best option. Oh, but right. So, so it is. So, the, I mean, that was my big question: is if you and the staff feel that here is your best option and preferred option, and feel that you can make it work without too much impact, or limiting the impact. Limiting the impact. So, uh, what are we doing? Vote? Vote? Well, obviously, we can, we can do that at, at any point. Um, the concerns, I, one of the concerns on the church thing that I can't answer myself, and it can be parents who would be sending the kids there, good, is the idea of closures during, during church events. What does that mean? I mean, because I could say, I can remember when I was, my son was in preschool at the church, if there was church closing, it didn't impact me, that's me. It's me. And we'd have to look at it more on the whole. Like, is it, that that's kind of disruption that wouldn't be of value to parents and, and something that would be here. That's, to me, the parents of kids who would be using it are really the only ones in my mind that can answer the, the problem of possible school closures due to church events. So, and well, most of the time, it would not be a plan to. It would right. not be right. your right. calendar from the beginning of the year. I mean, the reality is, it's, it's, it's you're talking a funeral because you know, the majority of weddings are the weekend. Yeah. You know, or during the vacation week or whatever. Or rehearsals. Um, but I mean, the teachers want to say that they recommend here, and to your point, <coughs> you know, paying rent, which is like throwing money out the window, as opposed to using the facility we have. And yeah, I mean, we could argue that the rent number probably too, but I think the rent number was really more a cover of their capital expenditure. It wasn't really a rent. I mean, it was uh, right, it, but that, it's that still nine thousand of the taxpayers' money not going yeah. towards the school. So, and the teachers say that this is their best option. I don't know. Do we need to continue to discuss the church as well, an option? Well, I mean, I, I, my my biggest concern was Gail and the staff, and, and right. That and now we, you know, I, I think a, a you know, we should end it and just move on. You know, but I think one thing that, that the fact that the church is a one-year renewable lease, I mean, it is an option to you know, okay, to right. use the church, try it, see how it goes, and either you know more is figured out as far as impact in this building in that time you know yeah. or we we find out very quickly like okay this is not going to work we're not going to do this a second year i mean the one year renewable lease is does make it more palatable um, but and, and the other reason i don't want to be too hasty about making the decision and i think i've already made my decision but i would support it either way but i would like to see it here more than, than there but i also just don't want to make that decision hastily because the community, the church is part of our community more than it is necessarily even a church. And this wasn't being offered as you know as a way for the church to get income or anything like that. It's the church probably trying to be part offering a solution to the community because the problem the community has a problem, the district has a problem with space. It's, it is a space issue here. And I don't think the staff came to an easy decision that they prefer to have it here over the church. And I just like like I said, I probably made my decision mostly based on the security aspect of it more than anything. I just don't know how we can our security for its building that we don't govern um, and that's a little bit of a different issue but I just also don't want to just discount the, the church's offering of the space and the community really offering yeah. of the space because it's the church is, is really our community most of us mm -hmm. are part of and, and I can I mean I was there at, at the vote and I could speak to you know that's what it was all about I mean there was not a single person there that voted no there weren't any um, you know absentee ballots that were no there were a couple abstentions and I think that was more didn't know enough about it and but everyone spoke to it was the community piece it's being there for the community community using the space you know so and i think uh, it's important to me just to recognize that yeah. and to honor that because like, i thought all along that the church was the best place for it because it's the okay. easiest solution for our community without digging too deeply into the details the more and more you dig into the details the more and more problematic it came for me but those are for more of today's real world problems as to what they used to be because I really thought the church was the best place. I just I don't want to discount that part of the discussion and the importance of the church being part of that community aspect of it all. I definitely thought the church was the number one option until you said this evening that the teachers and the staff, which is mostly what I was concerned about, and the well being of our students, integrating them and, and having a room enough for them to but well, as Jerry said, you know, and, and just like yeah. he knows, I, I spoke against having it here in our original committee for that very reason, because I didn't want to add a preschool to detract from our current programs. Right. Um, Did this come out of that discussion with the staff? No, that uh, that mm -hmm. came out of their own discussion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, remind me when... Myself. 
configuration is usually figured out for the next year? We are already thinking about it now for budget purposes, um, but we typically don't announce it formally until the spring. However, um, I did a two-year projection last year and um, had projected next year to be a standalone sixth again. Um, the following year, it's going to present some challenges, some real challenges. Which, which direction? More kids, less kids? Um, less kids at both the fourth grade and the sixth grade level. I have a, a bigger group of kids sandwiched with two very small classes. Oh, okay. How many into fourth? Okay. Coming into fourth. How many are currently in fourth? Oh, um, currently in fourth. Five. Uh, four. Four, 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 four in district. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Four districts. Yeah. Four kids in the district. So here's my, my thoughts on this. I think that um, I think I'm hearing from the from the board and the staff that we're ready to move the preschool forward with the idea of it being in this building. Mm -hmm. I think that maybe the next step would be for the building committee to get together and to discuss the facility and what we can do to accommodate the preschool and the sixth grade in this building and what that looks like and how we do that. Obviously, we can make it happen year to year. We have to, but it'd be nice to make it bigger investment in that concept really from the idea of attracting families to this town if we offer preschool for the six and have the facility to do it i think it's an attractive offer versus in the long run it doesn't make sense to have this to create in that environment that's something that we need to determine yes we can do it year to year we can make it work is it the best option under the current facility versus what can we do to expand the facility to make it really work um, so i think the next step would be to, to have the facility committees sit down and start to have that conversation over the next several months. There's one, one thing to remember too, you know, Gail just said she did her two year plan on configuration. So if we approve a preschool in this building next year, there is no long no longer a standalone sixth grade. Well I think that there's a difference between really? what their home room is, what well, classroom they're in. That's not what I said. But no but that's so you class. no I know you didn't say that. I said the chances of it because of the lack of can't, space. Can't put words in that's up to them to tell us. So if yeah. it would be that, or we would have three grades in one classroom, one of those two. That's up to. That's up to. Yeah, yeah, I'm just telling yeah, you, I'm making people aware of that. That is two part conversation. We've no, that's, that's not up to you. That's up to no, Gail. I'm not talking about that, Jen. I'm saying that there's, there, there's there's another part of this issue about keeping sixth graders here. There is about the staff gave us this, and I appreciate it. I can't wait to read it about keeping sixth graders here. But there's also. What changes your thought process when we're cramming back in again? Well, we, 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 we last year we weren't you removing the sixth grade. Year, we, in mandated, the we mandated Gail last year to make sure that sixth grade was a different, super fabulous, fantastic, right. ocious, whatever the term was that you guys were floating around here. And um, we need to know yes. that that's going to make that mandate more difficult for them. It, it will and it won't, though, because. First of all, it was in well, the, it was in the library, else. so we wouldn't impact. We would still have four classroom spaces. So I would not make the decision for or against a standalone sixth if it's not what's good for kids. And I think I said that before. Yeah. When we have two sixth graders, they're not going to be standalone six. I'm sorry. They're, you know, they need to have a peer group to collaborate with, and it's going to have to be either fifth graders or you know older or younger. We're going to have to do something different. And people talked about flexibility. We're also looking at more and more and more competency-based education. And we've started working really hard on um, student-led conferencing and setting goals with kids and, and bringing in uh, the Pavilion Project and working with that. So our plan is to continue to look at how to meet the needs of all of the kids. Where they are for homeroom um, is going to vary. It's going to have to vary based on the needs of the kids. And I think that that's the most important part for the board to understand is that where they are for home and what classroom they're in isn't necessarily the curriculum they're being taught, the looping that necessarily is going on internally. And I think that that's part of the communication problems that we had over the last few years in regards to where the sixth grade actually was homeroom versus what they're being taught and the board's understanding, your understanding. And I would also add to that from a process standpoint, the boards change every year. And we can't mandate that Gail's going to do something next year and have the expectation that that's going to happen. I think the frustration and the use of that word is that where we didn't feel we got the response that we were looking for all the time is where that kind of comes out of and that's something different. I think that's why we need to be careful going forward that we have the communication down properly. And that I, you know, I think we did say a little bit, even entirely clarify that the board doesn't have to be open to those kind of ideas where 
it isn't necessarily where they're in the home or what classroom they're physically in versus what they're being taught. The difference is there. But we might just need to have better conversations about that so that we understand better. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge two things. One is, uh, and to go back to what Jerry said originally, which is that we, this is obviously not going to be an easy decision. Peter Benson, how long have you been talking about this? Three, four years in the community with Emily yeah. and I personally yeah. been intimately involved with both the Bartlett Committee and then our own committee last year who proposed to put it at the church. So I think that is at the forefront of our minds that that would be the best place. But given the circumstances, um, I also want to acknowledge the church because that <coughs> brought my family to town was that preschool. And the thought of watching those little kids tromp around that playground as I drop my kids off at the school is an emotional attachment that I would love everyone to have. But that being said, I do think we need to be careful with our terminology and what we, what are we going to give to these sixth graders? Is it standalone? Is it super special? Is it whatever it is? We have to be careful about what that means. So maybe we can just take those words out for right now because I'd like to just offer my support that the budget comes down considerably if we have it on campus. We have had teachers and our leader, multiple leaders, tell us that that would be the best place. Um, I love the idea that we are beholden to no one if we have it on our campus for many reasons, security, uh, transportation, whether it's due to a funeral or something else. And um, personally, I would like to see it motivate us to do more creative things with our sixth graders. So whether that's using space differently, getting them out of the building more, whatever it is, I'd leave it up to you because though it's difficult, Gail, I think you guys can do it and that's also what you're paid for. So I'm offering you my support to keep plowing on with the building. Um, so does the board should support that? Of, of well, I think we should move the preschool forward with the idea. I think we should yeah. vote on it so it's in as yeah. an official vote. Those moving it forward to, to have the board, to have the board. Uh, so I'm making a motion um, to vote on, on the board speaking to it being in the school. Perfect. Perfect. Second motion. So more discussion about that at this point. Um, first, okay. was it Keith? Jen. <clears throat> and ordinarily this would also be where I would open up to the floor. I'm not going to do that tonight. Um, and just as a process standpoint, so that we've made a motion and we're going to vote on it. And after we vote on it, we'll make that decision. That's also the opportunity for if you don't like the decision or if you like it, you can come to us outside of meetings and voice that to us. Or in um, or in sense of comments at the end of the meeting as well as another place that you could you could state that. Um, tonight I'm going to try to limit it because we're trying to move things along. But, <coughs> but that's the way that process can work. Or you might not say it tonight, but you can come to us afterwards on uh, board or in sense of comments. Next meeting then is Warrant. No. No. So no that would be like December. No. So we're we're going to we're instructing them to, to form a warrant for the preschool. So we could technically put it in our budget operating budget as well, but we want the town to have a chance to vote on it. So we're going to separate. As a separate warrant article. So the, the warrant articles are voted on in March. That's when we'll have the meeting to do that. We need to have our warrant, the school board votes on what the warrant articles are going to be. They'll probably be so. Um, and this will be one of the warrant articles in there. We'll vote to have that established in December so that we can have a public, our first public hearing on that in January. Um, so we'll, in December, vote on what the warrant articles will be and what the numbers in that warrant are. Okay, so between now and December, we have to come up with all the budget numbers. And um, that's really the magic of the SAU and, and Gail and the staff. That's not really us. We just facilitate it. Um, and we make the decision in December what we want. We put it on a warrant article in January at the first public hearing. And that's where the public come to us and say, this is what we love about it. This is what we hate about it. Or what are you doing with this? Um, and that gives us the opportunity to change it if we want to. And if we have a change, significant change to it, then we have to have a second public hearing for the change that we have. And after that is pretty much that's what goes to the voters in March, in which case in March, the voters again have a chance on the floor to amend the number then that the, 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 the legislative body there chooses to do so. And, but they'll be able to vote up or down specifically on the preschool being part of our operating budget so that we can pay for it here. So the town votes for it, then it will be in our budget. The money will be appropriated and we'll be able to facilitate it. If the voters vote it down, then we wouldn't have the money to facilitate it here. So by the spring, as families, we will know. You would know at the March, March meeting. Yeah. And if you're for it, you should keep talking about it because it is it a two And bring <laughs> people and get people educated. It's an education process, and not a lot of people show up in the January, February meetings, and then they come to the March. Because reality, too, is on that timeline. 
next yeah. month's meeting, there really won't be a whole lot to talk about. I mean, I'm sure there'll be something someone will bring up, but <laughs> but the reality is because now it's in the budget process, it's going to be that December meeting that. But be just there. because the board voted for it, it's still two thirds, right? Two thirds of the people who show up have to vote for it. No, no, no. Yes. Yes. majority vote. Majority vote. Yeah. It's, not. it's not a long term contract. So. Majority vote. After I'm assuming after the March vote, it will go into the operating budget. Um, so if you wanted to take it out, you'd have to know how to amend the operating budget, um, which would be a wonderful. Um, That's actually <laughs> So we're going to vote on that, and then whoever wants to leave, they can. Do you want your glasses back? Susan? No, no, I can hear fine like without them. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be clear that, that the war article is going to be voted on the school district meeting. Seems kind of ho-hum compared to the town meeting, which is already incredibly entertaining. But I want to make sure you get to this school district. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think I said school. town meeting. Thank you for, for yeah. clarifying that. It is the school, school district meeting. When we have our meeting, we'll come to that. That's yeah. One of our concerns last year was that pretty much this town is very supportive of the school. A lot of people, they've had it by our annual district meeting, and most people don't even show up. So one of the concerns that people always have as a school board is that we can put this out there and we know people are going to vote for it and that's what we'll get. And our biggest concern last year was that we aren't really selling this well. We don't want to just go into March with having 10 people show up and all 10 people vote for it. Um, so the more you can talk, the more you can in your time. Yes. Yeah. That's kind of just like three families. So please do discuss it and, and try to engage the community with it because I think that the community is going to support it. At least I hope that they do. Yeah. And if people come to you and say one way or the other, say come to the meeting and talk about it. You know, this is what these meetings are for. But if we get to March and we've heard from 150 people that say we're all for it, and we've heard from 25 people that they don't like it, we know we're doing the right thing and we need to do the before for a vote in March. Um, all those are we ready to vote? Yeah, we vote. Okay. All yeah, those are This is just to vote to have a one article done. We're not actually voting on a one article. Correct. To have it done, yeah. say, right. so that the numbers for this. In space. December, we'll vote to have whether, in December, we'll vote to actually put it on, or not put it yeah. on the one article as a board. This is just an instruct them to create it. Sure. No, I'll move that to it. All those concerns? That's it. Congratulations. Um, anything on the pavilion? I think I don't know. Oh, Sorry. Well, we don't need an update. Do you want to give us one? Oh, yes. Oh, do you want to give us one? Yeah. Oh, geez. Oh, no, we do. Pavilion update. I just played one on what kids are doing right now. Really quickly, we have had a whole bunch of standards, particularly report card standards in the area. Uh, um, listening and speaking, writing for a variety of audiences, using um, um, informational reading, persuasive writing, um, and then the um, technology standards, which are the ISD standards. So um, the kids that, um, things that are tied to those standards are um, the architect is coming back in to go through the um, plans and had plans with the kids. We have two kids presenting to the Rotary Club this week. Um, and we have a, a couple of other kids who are developing um, a fundraiser based on some crafts that they're doing. Um, in social studies, we've started, in social studies and science, we've started looking at the natural history of New Hampshire um, and immigration. So we'll be looking, we'll be tying that to the use of natural resources and um, historical um, building practices and and all of those kinds of things and yep, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Ma measurement and math will come in too when Mr. Stokey <coughs> takes them back out and he Mr. Stokey did fill yeah, up the, the building it. permit with them even though we don't have official drawings we'll send nicer copies of those that are crooked on the wall behind you um, with the building permit so that if Kevin has any questions they can go to the architect before we get the stamp. Awesome. All business items, yes, they yeah. can sometimes stay on there indefinitely. But uh, we had the Lincoln Center on there for three years straight. <laughs> sometimes they're not very well. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but just because they're under all business doesn't mean yes, right? It's, 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 it's just keep them on there like the of our until something's actually got closed and it's all there. Um, sixth grade. 
Okay. So the staff has already kind of mentioned what my recommendation is going to be, but I thought it would be useful just to kind of review my background with folks, because I'm not sure that, that folks might know um, that I did my first year of college, I mean my first year of teaching after college uh, in a special ed private school that was K-8. to I then taught two years at a middle school, and a five through eight school, and then I moved to Seabrook Junior High, it was before the middle school, with Six, self taught a self contained special ed class in grades six through eight. I got my master's degree and moved to teaching uh, language arts in grades six through eight in a junior high model. Um, after getting my reading degree, I had kids in there somewhere and came back to Seabrook as the reading specialist. I taught grade two for just one year, but then was the Title I coordinator and the literacy coordinator at Seabrook Elementary, which had moved to a K-4 school, and at Seabrook Middle, which was a 5-8 to eight school. So I kind of wanted to make the point that you may not know that the predominant number of classroom teaching years that I've had were at the middle school level. So my recommendation is that the Jackson sixth graders should stay right here. And here's why. That's part of the reason right there. We have a, an enriched curriculum that we offer the kids here. I think we talk a lot about enrichment. However, what our faculty does every day with the kids is very enriched um, in comparison with many of the middle school experiences that I've had and seen kids at this age have. Our core curriculums are essentially the same. We're all teaching Common Core. However, here in Jackson, the multi-age benefits of having flexibility for kids for grouping, to group up, group down, whatever they might need. We have a smaller class size. We work really well in a small faculty with our integrated with our arts, our unified arts people, and arts are integrated within our classroom units. Um, and we have a good long hour for <coughs> all the UA. But arts are important here for us. We have, instead of a, a middle or a school um, computer lab, technology is integrated on a daily basis into all of our classrooms. The teachers have kids making movies and using technology to learn from, not just as toys, but really integrated. We have the opportunity to be outside with the kids more frequently than, than most um, public schools, particularly the middle schools. We take a personalized approach that we're working on refining and moving forward with. And our kids get a lot of opportunities to teach the younger students. I know you probably all know that you don't really understand something fully till you're able to really teach it to someone else. Our kids get lots of opportunities to do that through their buddy programs, through the special STEM activities. We do all school field trips, all school meetings, all of those things. We are really active experiential learning and we are the only school um, that has a full language immersion program in place for kindergarten. We do a number of artists in residencies. Some of them are spontaneous, as we were talking about at the Whitney Center today. We, we have the opportunity to have an artist come this fall. Every year, the um, New Hampshire Arts Council offers us that. We, we take that because the arts are important to us. Um, the circus smirkus, the kids learn a lot about science, balance, and PE. It extends into all areas of their learning. If a student stays here from kindergarten through sixth grade, they can be in four plays. Um, and as they move up into as older students, they get in the speaking roles. They get learning poise and oral speaking. And our kids are, are really good at presenting themselves by the time they I was talking, I went in to observe uh, Carrie Scribner last week, and she, we were just casually chatting, and I, I had to include this, because she said we are integrating with the immigration unit, which they're doing in, in the sixth grade, and we've researched Scandinavian influences seen in art today. We've examined pieces of the work, drawn sketches, and we'll move to doing silk screen. Here's the important thing. I wouldn't normally do this with sixth graders, but these kids are ready and they're interested. It's normally a middle school unit. We do this so naturally here that we often don't tell you about it, but when the kids are ready, we move them on. We, we ask them to do things that um, stretch them, and that's a good thing. Moving on already. Whoops. We have some great staff here. <laughs> <laughs> Our kitchen people clean the kazoos for the arts program. We take the kids out into the public. Our, um, 
building person is nailing nails with our kindergartners, making head wreaths with our sixth graders. That's a five six picture, I believe. Um, all of our units are integrated. Susan's making bread. All of our staff jump in and help, which allows us to do a lot of really cool, fun, integrated activities. We're really lucky in Jackson. We have strong community support from everywhere. Um, Grammys for our all fall festivals. When we did our Sea Perch unit, we had at least one adult for every student want to volunteer and, and to be a part of that. Um, it's a real value for us to have the um, support of our community. We were just talking a lot about what's happening in Bartlett, what's happening at the high school. When our kids are here in the school, we have local control. We can decide what the curriculum is, what we want for our kiddos, what's important. The outdoor time is really important to our families. We've got um, the opportunity for kids to interview and interact with community members. Um, as we know when they move on, we are not always in control of that curriculum part. We have a really intentional leadership program here for our sixth graders and we strengthen that every year. Um, they start by running the all-school meetings and designing the all-school meetings. This is our second year of having a student council and the student council is doing research and looking at Robert's Rules of Order and, and learning how to be leaders in the community. The buddy program's been in place long before me um, where the older students have a younger buddy that they're responsible for teaching during STEM activities, reading to, watching out for them on the playground. We ask them when their youngers are having issues to check in with them. They get an opportunity to um, reach out, develop empathy, give them a sense of belonging. Um, they're designing the all school meetings and teaching actually in some of the STEM activities that we've been doing. We enjoy here a low faculty to student racing ratio, which allows, enables us to do a lot of personalization, a lot of hands-on learning, and provide many opportunities for the kids to explore their talents and their abilities. Kim John Payne, I don't know if, if you have seen him speak, we saw him speak at the Waldorf School years ago. He has written a book on simplicity parenting, but also is <coughs> social inclusion model which helps to develop um, kids ability to feel included in a part of our community and one of his big tenets is that traditions and rites of passage in your building gives kids a real sense of belongingness and safety within a community they know that in the fall we're doing fall festival and everybody's going to carve a pumpkin <coughs> Everybody gets a Christmas cookie after after the holiday concert. They look forward to and feel safe and like they belong to the, belong because of those traditions. We have a tradition of excellence. I think the teachers might have mentioned it in the letter, but you have also seen Vicki Garland come and every year speak of the number of students beyond here who perform really well at the high school, they're involved in community service, they're great athletes, they're performing very, very well. This is a community that loves being outside. We have 45 minutes of recess scheduled, plus we are outdoors doing scientific explorations, just observing, writing poetry about the clouds, measuring things, um, having the opportunity to move and participate. And of course, we love to ski. We have a lot of opportunities to be on snow here. It's important to our community, and it's really important to our kids to have all that outdoor time. 45 minutes of recess, as I said. We're in our fourth or fifth year um, of the Mind Up program, and we have a social-emotional curriculum. Um, I've seen in the 10 years that I've been here, our rates of referrals for behavior issues and discipline have gone way, way down. We just have really great kids. Um, and we are intentional about making sure that through our guidance program and even in our classroom program, kids are given opportunities to talk about how they're relating to other kids. If they're having issues, we put uh, friendship lunches and have structures in place to help with that. And here last year, I don't know if, if any of you had the opportunity to read or to hear Nina Badger speak. Her um, well, 
salutatorian address was just amazing. Amazing. And then our own uh, Logan Hagerty won the Kennet Cup, which is for citizenship and um, giving back to the community. Significant awards. But they're not alone. Peter Benson left. Both of his kids performed really, really well. <coughs> so over time, as our kids have moved into middle school and high school, whether they were in a 5-6 configuration, a standalone 6 configuration, they've all done equally well as they move forward into their uh, middle and high school years. I did look at some research here. Um, sixth graders have more discipline problems when they are placed in a middle school forum as opposed compared to those sixth graders who are educated in an elementary school. And then there's something referred to as the top dog effect. That was probably the best research study. It was done with 94,000 students in New York. And they compared across a number of different schools, sixth graders, uh, disciplinary referrals, behavioral and social emotional issues that they were having, comparing the sixth graders who were in a K-6 versus sixth graders that were in sixth through eighth. And they came to the conclusion that the top dog effect, which is also impacts eighth graders, could be considered the top dog in some schools, but the sixth graders were most impacted and benefited most by being in school with long grade spans. And then um, West in 2011, he's done a couple of different studies, but um, the students benefit from being the oldest in a school, especially settings that include the very young and thinking that it was because of their opportunity to take on leadership roles. There's a book known as Yardsticks that talks about the different social influences of kids. Um, and when they get to this 10 to 12 year old stage that peer opinions matter more than teachers and parents. Um, ceremonies and rituals are important and as I said earlier, those are things that we do here. We have some ceremonies and traditions here. But they like to challenge rules, they're easily embarrassed, eager to reach out to others by tutoring younger kids is one of the things, and it's a common age for girls to form cliques. Um, I think when when you put the impressionable sixth graders um, with the influence of 14, 15 year old that are moving up, you're getting into cell phones and boyfriend, girlfriend and sexting and a whole host of things. The last piece of technology misuse, we had a presenter from um, the Conway Youth Officer came and told us some really scary stories about things that were starting to happen in middle school. Um, they think that they're grown and they're mature and they want to be cool and they still don't have the brain development that a high schooler might have, so we are starting to see more acting out in dangerous behaviors. So those were all things that I considered uh, while making my decision. So to summarize um, the factors that we have an ability to give them increased opportunities for personalization, we have more instructional time. I actually, Kevin gave us a formula to fill out our paper by the state to calculate. You have to remove recess and lunch and passing times and things like that. So our students are consistently getting five and three quarters hours a day of instructional time, and not including recesses and lunch and the extracurricular activities. So outside here, they have two recesses, a lower student ratio, the integrated experiential multi learning um, experiences that we're able to provide, retaining the local control of our resources and our curriculum, the arts integration piece, a higher level of community involvement and, su and support that Jackson in enjoys, our consistently high levels of success is improving over time, we plan and have deliberate leadership roles within the school, STEM and technology integrates fully into our curriculum and our social and emotional learning programs. And just my final um, kind of conclusion, you can kind of read that, but I think in general we want our kids to grow up too fast and our community is a very fast pace. I think giving them an extra year to grow and mature and benefit them, I see no advantage to them moving to middle school a year earlier. Um, and that our mixed configurations really allow the kids to learn how to collaborate both as a leader and as a follower, being a younger and an older, 
they've had the opportunity to go to do both over their six years. But I wish every child could have a school experience like JGS. I, I wished that I had known about it when my kids were growing up because we would have been here. You have such a special school with a great staff. Why would you want to have them go anywhere else? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So you asked me to tell you why. Yeah. That was excellent. Well done. Very yeah. nicely well done. <laughs> that, that was incredibly helpful and effective. I think I know I still have questions about it, um, not about your presentation, but there's questions I want to ask, things I want to comment on. Or I don't think tonight's the sort of right night to do that. Um, but again, I know it's tough to kind of go through these motions, but they're important because we do need to validate what we do, and this is a strong way to do that. Um, and, um, but I don't think the conversation and the questions end with that. Um, so I think that maybe the thing to do would be for us to maybe kind of gather our thoughts and questions that we might have. Well, yeah, and get a chance to really read this. Yeah. Read right. this, and maybe we put those down on paper um, or emails and either send, um, maybe send them to get not sure but what the best process for that would be. We send them to me and we coordinate that. Um, we want to, well, how do we want to? Move this forward, I guess, in a way that makes I think sense. We should openly communicate some the questions agenda. to everybody and mm -hmm. have it on the agenda for next. Have meeting. it on the agenda for next meeting, but yeah. and again, not because we're we're questioning this. This is, this is a process important for us to get through. Well, we had a lot of information from Joe that we haven't been able to discuss. We had this information from Gail. We have our own personal. So I think your for your point is to think about it. Think about it individually. Come Do up your own research a little bit more. Comments and questions we might have. And I think that would include maybe some more specific questions for Joe, if possible. I would say we had a lot of words from Joe. I'm not sure we had a lot of information. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of takeaways from that. You know that we didn't discuss that because we didn't have the time. So I think pulling our. I mean, just as an example, there's, there's lots of things that you said through there that I'd really like to highlight and reinforce. And like what what forum do we use to do that? Because there was some great stuff that was said there. I think that there's ways that we might be able to expand on that. So that just like I said, there's just that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Like those are the comments that you might make, questions that you might have about what was there. So let's put those down and maybe give them to Gail for the the next meeting and maybe one of us should meet with Gail so that Gail doesn't have to answer all of those questions necessarily. Well that's that that gonna be my recommendation, Jerry, is is either you can give them directly to Gail or to me beforehand mm -hmm. so that you can actually have yourself or the staff respond and include it in the board packet before it goes out. Yeah, and I think so with, just with the understanding that you don't have to respond to all of it, if it's something that you want to respond individually to each of us on, feel free to do that um, outside the meeting, whatever makes sense. I guess let's do that. Let's give it to Gail and then... Yeah, like, to well, be fair. Well, it's fresh in our mind. Yeah. Two, weeks. Yeah. two weeks after this meeting, two weeks before the next meeting. And that's fine, but with the expectation, again, that right. she yeah. doesn't have to respond to right. all of it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I mean, I, and one, only one thing I want to add on, and I'm Jerry, I know you try to stop time, is I think we should all remember that there's a term that Joe and Scott threw out that is going to be very important for us in this process, and that's that loose. This is not going to, this is going to be something that we just don't have the answers for. It doesn't mean right. that you need to vote yes or no because of it. It's just the way it's going to be. The stuff that we're not going to have answers for now. Thanks for developing. So, just to get this, are you each individually <laughs> sending your stuff to Ms. Dombowski? Yeah. And yeah. she's going to reply to you individually? No. No, no. She'll, no. She'll, 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 she'll have answers meeting. for the next meeting. Yeah. Right. Did okay. we say Mr. Milski? Or did we say Kevin's a hit right. like it? Kevin, are you taking it? Like copy Kevin or do you yeah. share with him? Whatever. We'll, okay. we'll do it together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. Just a question on the forum. How does that work? It's the two of you, but we're not talking to each other. It's just individual. Correct. Correct. Yeah. That's why. Thank you all. Otherwise, there's no more. I'll die a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. That was um, that was just fine. <laughs> 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 I guess, Kevin, yeah, what in these first readings was some of you wanted us to act on now that we need to act on now? Um, Is there anything that we can punch to another meeting, or do we need to go through all these tonight? Um, the video and audio recording we should do tonight. Um, well, we can do it in the first reading. I, well, I, well okay, no, but some of these are I don't need to admit of it, but we should have read these by now. Yeah. 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 Ye
that, but that, to vote on them now. So there's nothing to punt. This is just a first reading. We should have read them and should vote now on the first reading. Right. Uh, if there are any changes, we can right. bring them back. If you have any questions, yeah. let's just leave them. Back. Back. I'd go through just them. the first reading. Yes. We're, we're voting on considering the first reading. Right. Right. But one we're of not these, voting. one of these, he's, he's recommending that we have to vote on tonight. Don't we still have to vote on considering the first reading? No, yeah. no, no. We don't vote until it gets in the second. The second reading. Okay. Right, but the the one on we video, vote video recording and audio recording. I think he's recommending we actually vote on that tonight. No, no, you don't. Have to. No, just no, no. no on the first reading. Yeah, but if you read the, I, I recommend that the Justice School Board approve the yeah. above policies on the first reading. Okay. Right. Just wanted to read it. Okay. I think he was asking us to do this. But okay. if he's saying it's okay to punt it to the next meeting, we can punt it to the next meeting. So um, I'll read through these as the first reading. I won't read all of it. But, so we're going to consider first reading of policies, um, background investigation, criminal records check. Um, and soon we've all had the opportunity to read through these at this point. Are there any questions or concerns on the background investigation of criminal records check? I have one. Go ahead. Uh, the um, on uh, what would be the third page, the first paragraph, and it's beginning with no person with additional offer of employment. Just a question: Why is number seven sexual misconduct within an education setting in the state, as opposed to just in any setting? Why does it have to be in an education setting as opposed to any setting? This is just reference right out of the RSA itself. Okay. So when we get the RSA. We like to be consistent with what the actual law says. Okay. So that's why we pulled that out. Okay. Um, but you know, I pulled that, and I, I, would, I would like our policy to be any sexual misconduct. So I would want it to be more stringent. But again, just so bless you. If I might, um, sometimes a sexual misconduct may not be flagged. Right. And, and that's why if it's in an educational setting that comes you'll get that the comes back yeah. so that's why you will see any person who has been convicted of a misdemeanor may not be hired right i mean there's yeah. all the catch-alls that we get the other stuff well I just because sometimes you know 95 percent of the cases get pled mm -hmm. so they may be charged with certain things but when they get pled they plead to a different right. offense so this is where and three and we, four we go back. some as well. It just as an information yeah, to just we discuss that at the policy. Oh, okay. You, so you already talked about this? Yeah, we did. Oh, okay. And you were comfortable that it? Yeah. Okay. Like we, like we talked about this today, right. but that was the answer to it that we talked about. Right. Just so that we were, we did talk about that. Okay. Okay. My turn. But so you, you do that, you can actually you can make a motion that. We well, the, doesn't the rest of the sentence cover where it says, or where such person has been convicted of the same conduct in another state, territory, or profession, or possession of the United States? So it's just, so that would just mean that, that whether in New Hampshire or any other state, it's got to be sexual misconduct in an education setting. So, so if it was at Walmart and they were not in the education section. I just find that a peculiarity. Right. The fact is we don't put any, and oh, the catch all sort of catch it, but I think it's a, an important distinction. And I know. I, I just talked about from a process standpoint. Yeah. We so, reviewed it, we talked about right. it, we were satisfied, we we're ready to present this right. as such. If you're not, you can make a motion to change okay. it. Um, you uh, don't necessarily have to second it or agree, but you can do that. Okay. So the process allows for it. Okay. I mean, I, then I guess I'll make a motion that number seven be modified to say sexual misconduct in this state. Omit the within education setting so that it's more inclusive of any setting where that might happen. So you, so you want to modify number seven to say? Uh, sexual misconduct in the state. So just strike within an education setting.
I mean, if we're going deep into these, I had stuff too. We talked about. Well, I have two things I want to just clarify for my sanity. I guess so. Um, it, it's up to the superintendent, the principal. I'm going to leave a gray area there as to who gets a background check. I'm assuming it's custodian. Oh, it's anybody. Everybody. Everybody. anybody who right is so is in the anybody building. Anybody who not even in the building. Your okay. ESSC people, anybody who is going to be responsible for the student's soul. Okay. But if you bring in a guest speaker into the classroom, they're under the direction of either the classroom teacher or, or um, Stop it. Yeah, you go on a tour to the Museum of Science okay. and you have somebody, we can't ensure that. But anybody who is going to be a chaperone or anybody who's going to be working with students on a regular basis, everybody. I mean, we have thousands of them. I get my background check. I, I get them every day. <laughs> so the other question I had is that um, no selected applicant for employment shall be extended a conditional offer of employment. So how long, we've hired people, but how long is the process? So from the time at its inception, any person that I interview, they get the background paperwork right then and there. Okay, so most of the time it takes place during the summer and they go directly down to True B and they fill out the paperwork, sign the checks. It's typically about a two week turnaround. Okay. Now, in the event that, let's say, somebody's out on a maternity leave and we need somebody tomorrow or somebody, God forbid, gets in a car accident, we need a set to come in. Then what we do is we put somebody with a background check in the classroom with that person. Okay. So if you had a certified fifth grade teacher from another state who hasn't passed a background check but they're ready to go, you might put Gail right in the classroom with that person. Or you might even hire a substitute to be with, with that person. Yeah, right. they would never be alone with the kids. All right. It just doesn't say that and you just don't, yeah. I'm just trying to clarify. And typically, so they don't even ask. come into the classroom until they have that back. Okay. Thank you. I had, I had one on the background check. Is that the one we're voting on now? Yeah, that's the first one. Well, no, it's just the first reading, so we're not. Oh, I, uh, we would just vote on her change to it? Yeah. Yes. Just, that was a change yeah, to it. So we've changed, or if we voted to change the wording in it, we didn't vote for a policy. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that? The, just the section, I don't, the, I don't know the number of them. You were underneath page the Same three. thing, where they struck yeah. in addition to the felonies listed above. Yeah. I think the next two sentences are a little bit contradicting. Uh, and and I'm not sure if that's common. Any person who has been convicted of a misdemeanor may not be hired. And then it says such determination will be made by the board on a case by case basis. Right, so we just said they were going to be hired. What does it mean? Well, depends on what the misdemeanor is. I well, know, and but we're contradicting ourselves. Maybe it's just that word should be changed slightly, is all I was saying. May not be hired. It doesn't say will not be hired. It says may not be hired. Well, it says that for the felony. I don't know. It says shall. Okay, maybe. Okay, so there's your gray area there. Yeah, yeah. Anybody so then the, the two part B I had on that is uh, what about a current employee? Well, it shouldn't be in there. This isn't new. It's just a revision. Well, well after I, they were hired. You're just asking they've been hired and they oh, have, now and they they have, have committed misdemeanor. Oh. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Like, does that fall into that? Do they have to come tell us that? Do they? No. That would be helpful to add. Would this be the appropriate policy for that? I don't know if we want to go there. No, that, that's that, 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 falls, that falls into, uh, um, what, what am I trying to say? It, fall, it falls into conduct is after, it, as an employee. Yeah. Be Wait, is it just, you can't just talk about misdemeanors or felonies as well? Misdemeanors and misdemeanors. No, if they, they, we don't have any people who are felonies. And if somebody, <laughs> and if somebody <laughs> committed a felony, they'd be fired. Right. Yes, if a yeah. current employee yeah. committed a felony, they'd, they'd be done. Yeah. Yeah. That's, sorry, outside the, yeah. that's outside the yeah. parameters yeah. of this. Yeah. I mean, that, that's conduct of as an employee as opposed to we're talking about hiring someone. Got it. Right. We're ready to move on from that one. Um, Susan, are you hanging around just to get your glasses back? Because you can take them back. No, no, no. Thank you. Keep them. You might need them. I, I have three other pairs, Jerry, if you want to try a different size. I got one. Those actually work really well. How did these changes come about? Did, did just you guys reviewing it and realizing they need to be updated? No, what happens is we get updates in our office. Any kind of law changes, 
and then a lot of time there are suggested policies that come out. So this was a change in the law. Yeah. Because coronal background checks have been such a big deal over time. So they just updated this one and we've changed all the policies. And if your policy doesn't keep up with the law, the law still is the law when you right. have to do it just means you're your, your, no, just means your policy. It means your policy doesn't mean anything. Right, right, right. Um, your policy has no. So that's why you do that. Um, move on to video and audio recording in school classrooms. Um, that was updated since we approved it in September when we approved it. It was actually changed, so that's why that's there. Um, it seems pretty self-explanatory. Anybody have any questions about that? Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, just one quick question. So there used to be this big form. Now written consent can come in any form? It, it, it's, that's correct. Okay, yeah. thank you. It, will the SAU have one specific form, or will it be? Okay. But it's just a, the, the teacher now. Got it. So the, the, they have recognized that Recording students for educational purposes is part of what we do now. Right. You know, students can confer with teachers and send them, you know, video. Yeah. Hey, this is the character in my book. So that is is Owners. yes. Yeah. Um, the. Uh, non-academic surveys, that just basically means if it's a non-academic survey, you need to get parents' permission before you do it. Is that a question from that one? Yeah. Admission of non-resident student, not an employee. Um, it's fine. There's no pricing. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how that showed up on here. We, we talked about that at yeah, our policy okay. committee meeting. Do you yep. remember? Vaguely. Um, I just didn't know we finalized that. <laughs> well, we, we recommend that they change the wording and come yeah. back to us. That's why we're seeing the first ring. Tuition for our So last year, um, we had a citizen ask us about a reduced admission for part-time employees policy. Would that, would this be a policy? Would we add that to a that was a town employee, not a school employee. employee. Uh, no, it was after that. That was a town employee. That was this was in response to that, Jess. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. We did discuss it within the last year, though. I, I remember, I think it was last May that okay. we discussed it. I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we decided to keep it status quo. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, the um, non discrimination policy, public complaints about discrimination in facilities or services. Um, any questions, comments on that one? So let's just make sure we go through these again before next meeting and then next meeting. Yeah, because I still want to talk more about that one line. We'll get it again at second meeting for the next packet. I just try not to slow down this meeting tonight. Okay. I have to leave. I'm sorry. I have to go with Kenneth. I told him I asked that walk. Just a quick question. Is it worth having the listening post a half an hour earlier? Yes. Given the discussion tonight? Yep. To before Jen goes? Yep. I think yes. Yes. Okay. So five o'clock. Okay. So you're, you're I don't know. Do we need that time? We're not supposed to really answer anybody during that meeting. Okay. Because we just 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 we we can't start the next one early. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 That's always the catch twenty two of us that early. Could backfire on you. I just think there could All be a lot of people yeah. talking no, about I stuff because, yeah. because yeah. it's middle yeah. school, high school. Yeah. 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 We just have to decide which side of the fence we want to go. If you want to talk, you can go sit on that side. Right. Well, 
No, but that's going to be a compass and that's what's out right now. Um, that's kind of outside the parameters. That's kind of part of it too, but we could have it. So say, like, if, you, if you'd like, we can postpone that until the next meeting. If, you're, if you want to discuss that more. Yeah, that's good. Well, I know, but I think those of them say that this is, meeting is already later than it yeah. should be and you have to go. That's the only reason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, we can do that. Because if, if it's okay. not going to impact honestly, I think that, that conversation is going to be longer than right. the time we've really got tonight anyway. So, right. I think we're... As long as no one's going to sleep over. Yeah. So, we're done with the instructional issues. Okay. Gail, I, I'm, I'm going to apologize to you for right, Gail? For this. Sorry. Um, Single parent. Well, we were going to do two things tonight on that. We were going to vote for Jen Lee's on extending it for the next school year, separate from the contract. Remember? Oh, that's to give like her it's going to impact on anything. Because right now like she's not only under contract through June. So we said we were going to quickly vote tonight on what we should have done last May or June. And then I thought this was actually going to be on our next meeting, is what I thought. Or I thought it was going to be on there as two separate things. I think I got enough information to, from, yeah, okay. to, to go into this. Okay. And I think we're going to go in now in public to discuss a couple portions okay. of it. Um, and, I'm supporting it. Thanks. And then we'll come out in non-public and vote. <laughs> so I, I guess Sorry. I'm going to entertain the motion to go into non-public to discuss that contract for an employee under RSA 91A-3, subsection 2. Do you, you really get that right? D? Uh, I'm not sure what to do with that because you usually do that at the end. Do you want so to do I, that? Oh, do, do I do I leave? Do I come back? I don't. I just. I don't think it's going to take very long. And it's I just don't know what to do. this, so I, mean, I, I think I just do it right now and this because any other stuff is. We'll, we'll come back out of it and. Um, Can we bump well, it to the end? So yeah, why don't we bump it to the end? Okay, we can bump it to the end. Bump it to the end, and then sure. people can. Yep. Yeah. And then I can, I can email you if they make a decision out of that. I'll take notes out of non-public. Because we do want to come out of non-public and go into public, right? right. And take a and I can take vote minutes at that point. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Because you have the, 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 the second non-public as well. Okay. Because I don't usually. I mean, I just yeah. minutes at the end, and they do whatever. Point, right. point well taken. So we'll. No, we're gonna. I, I don't know. Once I'm done, I'm done. We'll revisit okay. this after. Okay. We're going number eight. After number business affairs twelve. Um, so business affairs, budget status report. Any questions about the budget? Um, please say you don't have any reports. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, do you have any sometime reports? Do I? I have, <laughs> I've been listening. Uh, I have so much to say, but I, you know. I listen to words and, and I try to capture and, and hear what is being said. And I think I want to be careful about the word loose because loose implies that there's there's no structure around that. And I think that the word flexibility is is probably more appropriate as we move down this path. Uh, flexibility for sixth grade teachers, you know. It, I hear the sixth grade standalone. What does that mean? I'm glad you picked up on that because I'm not sure standalone means just within the confines of these walls, but more about there are certain experiences as a sixth grade student that are integral to these students here. Um, Competency-based education. I think the more that we we get into this, the more flexible we can be to meet the needs of the students. I have four children of my own, all very different, and to expect them to go through the same experience is, is foolhardy, you know, and, uh, you know, you're talking to an old accordion player. Miss Houlihan's a beautiful, beautiful music teacher, but would I have benefited from perhaps getting more instruction for music ed? I'd still be playing today, you know. But but those are the pieces, and those are difficult pieces for teachers to really grapple with as well because we were so much into the coverage. We had to get through so much information, but it's it's uh, we have to play that way, and we have to personalize, you know, the, the education for the students. So those are great questions. In, in we know we have to change as an educational institution, 
the state of New Hampshire is allowing us to do that more so than other places who are very prescriptive that on May 15th you're doing this if you're in fifth grade and fourth grade and um, so the flexibility I think is, is extremely important and it's about equity and access as well and you know Angus brought up a few great points about if we're doing this for this group of students well shouldn't all of the students have the same access on an equitable stage absolutely so I hear these pieces and I think these are important pieces for the teachers the staff the principals the educators and the board to be able to say okay hey how are we going to respond to that now we aren't going to get there overnight but I think that it's extremely important to register those those pieces other than that uh, just two, two things we are in the um, the process of developing the budget and, and I know we're starting tomorrow in the SEU office we'll be meeting Jackson folks you guys will be in, in the end of November the 28th now that we have direction on the Warren article we'll be kind of bouncing that back to you folks for further direction um, and then the SAU 9 has a meeting on uh, November 16th pretty important that is the SAU 9 budget so if you can attend and make that that would be terrific and who's our budget committee again? Yes. Uh, Jen. Jen. Great that's it. Kevin thanks for that um, I do like the words we use is going to be very important and going through a transition they always are and sometimes they're frustrating because everyone's got to learn new words sometimes and even that can be frustrating um, but I, I like the word flexibility and I think from a board perspective sometimes what we say might be offensive to administrators might be offensive to the staff and we don't mean it that way necessarily it's we want to give them the flexibility but at the same time doing that means we're trusting but trusting means also verifying so sometimes what we're trying to do is go through the verification process mm -hmm. it's not that we don't trust or don't think that it's a good idea it's just that we need to go through the motions of the verification because that's what validates to the community and what's us make so we, we can say uh, how do when you said how do we respond to that we don't know sometimes but we do hear parents in the community sometimes it's ourselves in the community saying hey, wait a minute we don't like the way that looks yeah. well how do you respond to it well if you don't respond to it then it becomes a festering problem so that's why the verification process is <coughs> the best part is important. and you should and you should challenge every single one of us all the time and just does your job you, keep, you guys all okay. sorry go ahead okay so um we had two teacher workshop days well a half a day and a full day last week and so the first evening um the faculty and myself looked at the competency-based uh, infographic that you've all seen and we rated ourselves under each of those areas. Are we just getting started? Are we partway there? Have we done really well? And it helped us kind of sort through our thinking about where we are and where we might need to go. Um, on Friday morning, we did spend some time around the preschool, but we also have been reading the Leaders of Their Own Learning book, and um, Chapter 5 was on student-led conferences. That's something new that the Upper Houses is, is piloting this year. Um, so we did some discussions around what our structures for um, those conferences could look like and then we all rode down to Pine Tree School who's in year three of doing student-led conferences. We watched a video together. Our staff brought what they had to share from the readings. Their staff brought what their experiences were. They had some nice dialogue and then we had time to break out at the end to kind of um, consolidate what we would do here and they set some goals for themselves as well. Um, so this week, actually, in the 18th and 19th, Joan and John will be meeting with the parents of the 4th, 5th, and 6th graders to, we've got some um, assessment data because we've done our beginning of the year assessments. John and Joan did some um, self-evaluation of your learning style type activities with the kiddos that they're going to bring into that, and we're going to do our first student-led conference goal-setting sessions this week. I think that's really exciting. It's yeah. really exciting. And it, and it was it's great. great. It's, uh, yeah, just it was great to have that opportunity too to share with Pine Tree folks about what was working well for them, what wasn't working well for them. So it was a nice time for us to have some collaboration with another school as well. Um, and just to give them all some credit, because we're such a small school, 
PACE requires three full day workshops in each academic area, math, English language arts, science. Um, so every one of these teachers is in a PACE group, so they will be leaving and spending a lot of time working with peers from around the state. Um, and also, Ms. Robert is uh, representing us at the quality performance assessment. They're giving a training on how do you develop a really quality performance assessment to give to kids. You both are. You both are. Yeah. Great. Great. So, and we're going to come back and train the staff. And one bit of it, um, information, Chief Curly stopped by. They're going to do a drug take back day again. And it worked so nicely to use our driveway. Uh, he had requested that they use our driveway again. So that's on October 28th. You will see some activity out in our driveway with our Sunday. police department. Sunday. Hmm? Sunday. I mean, it wouldn't be during the school day. Oh, no, 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 no. It's Saturday. <laughs> I think it's a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bad combination. <laughs> no, that would, that would not be good. Yeah. Thanks, Carl. Um, that brings us back to citizen comments. Uh, citizen comments. Uh, do I have to get up or can I just no. Okay. <laughs> so, just, I just wanted to clarify. Um, so, I have a rising seventh grader, and, um, you know, we homeschool. And we've had a wonderful experience of Jackson being able to um, hybrid our days. And I'm hoping that your push towards this will be um, impacted by some of the things that we've brought to the school. But um, I'm called, I had asked Nancy Kellerman over at Bartlett how it works with their homeschoolers, blah, blah, blah. And she was very kind and got me a lot of information. And it occurred to me that for budgeting purposes, you would need to know what my intentions were. So I'm meeting with Joe Bosi this week to take a tour and talk about that. I don't know if it, you do the worst case scenario of a full-time student, or do I need to give you something in writing, or what for your planning purposes would be the most helpful? I, I think that I just, I don't know how much of this is non-public versus public. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna sorry. Say, I think yeah. that you can just, just give that to. Okay, I, mean, I just didn't know, like if I had to. Well, in, in other districts, you, that we have tuition agreements with. Okay. We we do a best case scenario, okay. worst case scenario, and then try to. Okay. And then I just didn't want to affect yeah. our budget when we were. Then the right. contract does allow for us to clean it up on the other. Okay. Area. Because so. you're you're a year behind as okay. well. Right. Okay. Remember the ADM. Right. So okay. when students only go for half a year yeah. and then they move. Right. You're only paying for that half a year. You want. Okay, so I don't and, and is there precedence? Have we been judged for a portion for a homeschool student before? Uh, well, it's it's not homeschooled necessarily. It's it's tuition based. Right. So I'm just saying, let's say, for example, she wants to go to music and PE, and that right. was it. So if we have a student, and I'll use other towns, yeah. uh, Eaton, who only come for half the day. Well, I mean, with Barlow, do we they, have precedence? They, well, it's the same happened? thing. Has it's it a tuition happened? agreement. Yeah, I believe so. Sure. I know there's a specific law about high schoolers. I right. just, the middle school says, I just didn't want to mess with their budget. So, okay, thank you. I have one. Um, Bartlett charges the preschool families tuition. Is there any attention in Jackson to charge the preschool families tuition? No. No. It's going to be free? public preschool, that, and that's what they're looking at, too. They will be after school care. They will be, that you can choose to pay for. Pay for. But currently, they're still being the parents are being charged partly. But right? so that's a private school. Right. 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 I know it is. Yeah. I they're, they're, they'll be voting on public too, and if they do, then there's. That but but, our, but well. the intention of ours is it's public. Public right. preschool. Mm -hmm. But paid after school. Um, so there's four parent after care that would be optional that would be paid by the caregiver, but the the actual day nine to one yes would be covered by tax. Else? I might be going away in May, so I might need Gail Dombrowski to help me with Partlet to uh, get a child out of school the longer than needed for an amazing family trip. <laughs> <laughs> an <laughs> educational <laughs> trip, right? Identify well, some. I'm with you. I mean, if if that, you get the hours in. If it's well we for a whole year. That's <laughs> the key. Right. Susan, oh, yeah. take these back so I don't steal them from you. No, we've lost with kids that <laughs> 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 from New York to, to Florida. And that's how they deliver their education. Well, ours, you know, Garrett was out of Bartlett. Now, granted, it was a whole year, so logistically it was a little easier, but 
as far as what we then took to the school and said this is what he did and so we did throughout the year um, but I can talk to you that would be a little about it too I mean it, and Joe and the staff over there were very receptive to it now again a whole year is a little different but I haven't I'm, approached them yet but it's early but they we're talking May but I'm like yeah. so I, I, can, I can talk to you about I can talk to you about some of the stuff that we did yeah. okay um, board member issues I've got one quick one um, as far as committees are concerned the I thought of this, I don't know why, a couple weeks ago, that signing on the Whitney Center, shouldn't we maybe bump that to the Whitney Oversight Committee for them to figure out? What do you mean? As far as like, <laughs> or, or, or what's so the So the signing on the building, you've got, we've got some money in the budget for it, although we put it into the, at any rate, the signing has to change some back. Right. And our, faci our facilities committee can look at it as under the school board, yeah. or maybe the recent no, I'm talking about deciding on the, siding on, the, on, the right. on the Whitney Center. Well, we actually talked about it a little bit today at, at the at the meeting because of the Whitney. I'm just wondering that we should task the Whitney Oversight Committee with just taking yeah, on we we like how to go how to go about it. when it needs to be done and just monitoring it because yeah. it's part of if there is money in the we got a capital reserve fund for the maintenance of the Whitney Center itself, which and is, we can take it on the other thing too, which falls under more of the purview of the Whitney Oversight Committee. As far as that capital reserve fund goes, which we might have to tap into to do the signing. So I'm just wondering if that should be a discussion. But that them. would have to be voted on by this board. Well, they would recommend it, though. They, yeah, they could recommend it as right. far as, like, this is something. What's that going to look like? Is it, is it just going to rely on John saying, do it now? Which maybe that's fine. I'm just wondering if we should, if it's more proper for the Whitney Oversight Committee to take it on the siding issue than, than us, or is that too complicated? From Andy's but, comment, and I don't know if he sounds like it was. It is. Well, I mean, <laughs> we, we talked about kind of what the plan was, and right now there's the idea of like let's try it on the back first and right. see how it goes. Okay. So it's being discussed in that committee, anyways. I just say it's more proper yeah. for the that committee to be discussing it than, yeah. than our facilities. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, there for. I updated the Whitney committee with what yeah. John and Jim had talked anyway, about. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. So we kind of already are doing that. I guess. <laughs> Next meeting. Oh, oh I'm sorry. No, I, I, yeah. I got one. Um, and <laughs> Love beating a dead horse, um, but I just this is, people have asked me this, so I, I've got to pass it on. So the bus getting here a little bit later. The Jackson kids coming from Bartlett are waiting for quite a while. The bus switch mm -hmm. is that delay now? Number one, does it have anything to do with football field hockey? No. The it, bus going no, down there and having to, do to come with back. A change in our student population in terms of where they live. So it's okay. increased the distances between the bus so, stops. So then, so then waiting there for the bus switch because that bus just has further to go before it's then coming back right. down. It has to go all the, the way to the Wildcat townhouses. Okay. Because the, and so is that why the, it's now their departure is three fifteen here. Right. Okay. Because there's, again, it's not a huge deal, but but the Jackson kids coming from Bartlett on that one bus are sitting there on that pull off on the side of the road for ten minutes sometimes. And it just that I guess the, the clarification that we need is that bus switch. That bus isn't the one that's driving the kids to football. Yeah. It's a different bus. No, that bus is there long before this bus is here. Yeah. Right. And that's it my just point. leaves the school and it goes straight there. Because that was another well, one of the concern I was hearing from people that people were, were thinking they're late because of the football. And I can't no. translate it. It's a different bus, but just needs to verify. No, but in general, just so, and I did not know this for some of the years that, uh, until I had kids in all the different schools, but the dismissal in Bartlett is not the same every day. It, it, it all depends on when the buses get there. And that all determined is what's at high school. Like, for instance, one day last year, the high school was repaving their road when they were trying to dismiss at the high school. Bartlett got out 20 minutes later that day. So yeah. it's a kind of a little bit of a revolving piece. Which it always is here, too. And, I think and that's why we decided to go with 315, because we know it right. could be 305, right. it could be 310, it could like be, we, we know it's always yeah. hit by 315. So this, this time of year, there's a lot more cars on the road. Yeah. <laughs> They're well, gonna well, be I have right. my loose slash flexible answer. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I just have one clarification, the, uh, or one question. Um, who will let the church know that we are very grateful? I'm happy to call Gail okay. tomorrow. Okay, thank you. And extend your heart. Thanks. Um, I think, too, as a pleasure board, we should probably compose a letter. Okay. And, and that's a great idea. Um, thanks, Andy. <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll, I'll write it this one. Thank you, as a board.
I'll bother the justice to make sure it's written properly. <laughs> so, are you just going to do the letter, or are you going both. to do the Yeah, I'll, I'll do, do the letter. letter. Do both. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'll let them know informally or formally as that is in the report. At least give them the courtesy of a letter. Because I've dealt basically with Gail. I'll call her person and you're going to write the letter. If you're going to write the letter. Set date for next meeting, Wednesday, November 15th. Yeah, we're talking PM. about moving the middle sink goes to 5. So yeah, we talk about yeah, we talk about moving to 5. I don't yeah. know. Okay. Is that okay? Okay. okay. All right. Folks middle school, high school. That's, that's your yes. Yeah. And I will not be at that meeting, but. Um, Lori Burnell has found a substitute, yeah. and I, okay. at the moment her name is completely. Lisa Toll? Yes. Perfect. That's who's coming in my office. And we'll all submit questions to Gail. Um, and speaking of that, one more thing before we go, do we want to invite um, the video for the yeah. listening post? I think it's a good idea yeah. if Hank can make it. Yeah, when? 5 p.m. It's just 5 o'clock at our, at before our next meeting. Sure, yeah. We'll, we'll be at 5 instead of 6. Okay. Next, are awesome. you, you going to do it here or next door? The, oh, that. Um, I think our next meeting we'll, we should have at the community center. Okay. Thank you. If nothing else, just to reinforce why we don't have it there. Joe, so that makes your life easier in general. We, we, we can have them there all the time. No, I, we. <laughs> I'd rather give Mr. Stokey a hard time. Do, than you. He, he, well, you know, it really gives Stokey something to do right. when he first gets here in the morning, right? right. Um, manifest has been signed. Um, it, I think for technical purposes, I think that when we post a meeting, a public meeting for a certain time, if we decide to have it in the community center, technically that's on the campus. We just can facilitate by putting a sign on the door saying yeah. meeting group to the community mm -hmm. center. So we can do that. On as needed basis. Um, loose up, you, loose you just reminded me. Um, <laughs> we I, we've talked about this in the past. I know the PTO has sometimes done child care or not. This week, I was actually just approached by people to get child care. I don't know what I, I think we found people, but there is there are multiple requests coming in for these preschool discussions in sixth grade. I don't know if we want to do that. I don't know if we want to ask the PTO to do it or not. I personally would be in favor of it if, if we want people to come to meetings. We're in elementary school, but. I'll go with whatever the board says. I just think we need to make a decision because we were sort of right. straight away way in advance to, to know, set that up for the year at the yeah. school board meeting and line somebody you know, We've done it for some of the meetings we knew were going to be bigger meetings. I guess the listening post would be one. Middle high school. Yeah, that's true. Maybe not so much of that one. Yeah. I guess middle high school. So I might not have All right. Pizza, pizza. Manifest has been signed. Uh, I'm going to entertain a motion to go into non public. Then pursuant to RSA 91A3. All those in favor? That's all four of us. <laughs>